We come now to the fifth session of our Strategies for Fighting Lust, the acronym ANTHEM, A-N-T-H-E-M, and we are focusing in this session on hold. Let me explain what I mean, and then we'll pray. First, we try to avoid at all costs anything that would destroy us by way of temptation. If we're not able to avoid, then when it enters our mind through our eyes or ears or just imaginations, within five seconds, like a snake being flung at our neck, we say no and fling it away. We look it in the face and say, no, no, this is not who I am. This is not where I'm going to let my mind be taken. No, in the name of Jesus, be gone. But you don't leave it at the negative. You replace the no with a turning to something positive, especially the gospel, especially views of Jesus Christ that are glorious and satisfying, some of them very horrible because he suffered so much in order to make us pure. Now, right here, is where so many make a mistake. They say, well, I tried that. I turned to Jesus, and it didn't work. And I asked them, well, how long did you hold that thought there? And they say, well, I didn't count. Like, what, a minute? Well, yeah, a minute or two. (laughs) And I say, well... What if the garage door, the electric garage door, were were coming down on your child and it was just inches above and you grab the bottom of that garage door because you're not close enough to push the child out of the way and you with all your might hold, you hold that garage door off your child. Are you going to say, well, it didn't work? After a minute or two, he kept, the child just kept being there. So I let it go. No, you see, people ask me, how long do I hold? Answer is, hold it as long as you have to. Hold the thought, hold the vision of Christ there as long as you have to. So, Father, as we ponder this from your word, give us the resolve to hold you and your gospel and your word and your son in our eyes until we are free. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hebrews 12, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. This looking to Jesus is not do it once Try to keep your mind there and then maybe a minute and then leave and give up. This is look as long as you must look. Make this a practice of looking until he becomes overpowering to you. Verse 3, consider him. Look to him. Consider him who endured from sinners such hostility against himself so that you may not grow weary. So many people give up so quickly. They look to Jesus, the temptation still is battering their minds, and they just, in weariness and faint-heartedness, quit and yield to the temptation and stop fighting. That's not a warrior. That's a quitter. Don't grow weary in looking to Jesus. Don't grow weary in considering him, and you won't grow weary in defeating lust in your life. Galatians 6, 9, let us not grow weary in doing good. 
And the reason this, these are in the Bible, these don't go weary commands, is because we are prone to think that a little effort, maybe five minutes of effort, which would be a lot for most people, instead of five hours of effort, staying up all night if you have to, to say, no, 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 I will not grow weary in doing the good of resisting this temptation to keep my soul pure because my soul hangs in the balance according to wor the words of Jesus. Not grow weary in doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. One last text. Revelation 2.13, I know where you dwell. Jesus is talking to the church. Where Satan's throne is, so they live in a very embattled situation where, where Satan's throne is, yet you hold fast. There it is again. You hold fast my name. And you did not deny my faith, even in the days of Antipas, my faithful witness who was killed. Even when it threatened your life, you did not cease to hold fast. So, hold fast, don't let go, avoid, if you can't avoid, say no immediately with all your might, this is not who I am, I belong to Jesus Christ, he bought me with his blood, I will turn now and ponder his great gift of sacrifice, I will look at his blood-stained cross and see him heaving and breathing his last breath to make me pure, and I will hold that in my head and in my heart as long as it takes in order to be free. I doubt that any of us has held on to a beautiful, positive, purifying picture of Christ too long.